Let's welcome back NBA salary cap expert Larry Kuhn to talk this week about the Lakers' big upcoming summer. You were so good that we're having you back to do this again. Thanks for coming, man. I'm glad I passed the audition. You did, by the way, with flying colors. Fans love it. Uh, and you know Laker fans are very dialed in to the summer of 2018. Oh, yeah. Let me ask you this first. How much money do the Lakers have? for free agency right now? Right now? Yeah. Not a dime. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> what do they do? <laughs> they have all these free agents. And when you have free agents, you have cap holds and the cap holds take up all your room. First thing you gotta do, renounce free agents. Create some of that cap room. Let's start with Brooke Lopez. Gone. They have to renounce him. Gone. He's a huge cap hold. We Let's just go around, the, yeah. around here. Travis Ware. Gone. A small one, but we got to get rid of him. Isaiah Thomas, probably not going to keep him. Not worth the kind of money that they're going to have to pay him. KCP, gone. He's going to be looking for a bigger deal somewhere else. Now we're down here. Channing Fry, he's going to be gone too. We've just freed up about $45 million in cap. Right there. That's $45 million. That's $45 million. Now we're under the cap by that amount. How much money do they need for two max guys? 65. 65. We're still way under. How do they get there? Let's start with Lou Alding. I had a one feeling of, you were going to go there. Absolutely <laughs> one of the worst contracts in the league right now. How many tweets a week do you get about that? Who hasn't tweeted <laughs> me about that? <laughs> So, so he makes a lot of money. He makes a lot of money. Plan A, trade him. But they have to throw in a lot of sweetener to get rid of him. They may not be willing to pay what it's going to cost to get rid of Lou Alding. When you say sweetener, because I hate to interrupt you, you're talking one of these three big names. You're talking guys. one of these big the core guys. Yeah. Plus you're talking a draft pick, probably two first round picks, just to get a team to bite on Lou Alding. What if they stretch him? What does that mean? That's the other thing. Rather than trade him, you just cut him. Now, he's owed $36 million over two years, which some would say is a lot of money. But if they cut him, that $36 million is stretched over five. That saves them about $9 million on the cap. That gives them a little bit more money. Now we're up over 50, close to $55 million. Still not enough. So... With this core group of people, the guys you really want to hold on to, we can free up a little bit of extra room. We can get rid of Ivica Zubats. We can get rid of Thomas Bryant because these guys are, are under non-guaranteed contracts. If the Lakers waive them, they don't owe anything. As long as they waive them before June 30th or July 5th in a couple of cases, Tyler Ennis is another player in that position. Now we're down to the core and we're still not there. And that means what, Julius that Randall? That means Julius Randall is the next guy. Here's the bottom line on this. If the Lakers want two max free agents, then one of two things has to happen. They either trade Luol Deng rather than cut him, or they have to say goodbye to Julius Randall. That's the only way it happens. What's his cap hold? His cap hold is going to be about $12.5 million. $12 million. That's the difference between getting that second guy or not. What is a max contract look like for LeBron James and for Paul George? Are they different? Yeah, they're different because max depends on how many years you've been in the league. A guy who's been in the league 10 years or more, he's at about $35.3 million. A guy who's been in the league seven to nine, like Paul George, about 30.3. So you're looking at about $65.6 .6 million if they want both. If they get a LeBron James and a Paul George, let's just say that. We all we all know Le LeBron's a, a long shot, but let's just say they, they, they pull it off. How do they fill out the rest of the roster? First of all, this is a situation that they're hoping that they're in. Anybody would that, hope that, this right? Is, yeah. This is the best problem to have. You have such a good core of players at the top and you have to fill in the rest. Players are gonna be begging to sign. The Lakers are gonna have what's called the room mid-level exception, about four and a half million dollars. And then after that, it's minimum salary contracts. You're looking at veterans who are ring chasing, essentially. It's just like Miami Heat all over again? Exactly, 2011 all over <laughs> yeah. again. Wow, okay. Put Julius Randle back in there. Let's say the Lakers get Paul George, LeBron stays in the East because he loves going to the finals every single year in the East. So Julius Randle, they can sign him. They have Paul George. How do they fill out the rest of the roster? They're going to have a little bit more cap room. Mm -hmm. You're in about the 10 to $20 million range because of that money you didn't spend on LeBron. Now you can sign another good player, 
you know, maybe a, a good wing player, someone to fill the middle because we're a little bit empty right here. All of a sudden we've let everyone go there. Right. So we're probably playing Julius at five. We're, we're moving Kuz to power. Kuz, we're yeah. moving Kuz to four. We have, we have a book, a few All threes. Doors, yeah. We can take care of this, but we need some people to, to fill out in the front court. And that's we can sign a couple of guys to do that. And then we're back to that room exception at four and a half million dollars. And then we're back to minimums. Larry, so intrigued. What will the market be for Isaiah Thomas? I don't think it's going to be great. I think that he's going to be looking for more money than certainly the Lakers are going to want to spend because they can get the same kind of deliverables from a cheaper player. So they're going to let him go. I think that he's going to easily qualify for a mid-level, so about $8.8 million from a team. Maybe one of the teams with cap room takes a chance on him and really signs him to a bigger deal. But he's certainly not a max player anymore. By the way, this is great stuff.